An early source of frustration for new Minecraft players is to learn that some machines will actually do two different things depending on which way they're facing. To make things worse, it turns out that for any given structure in Minecraft, there's actually 48 different ways to build that same structure. Most of these 48 you would never build on accident because there's only eight of them that actually keep the shape right side up. The rest of them flip it some way, upside down or sideways. Then out of these eight, four of them are the mirror image of the original shape, which is also kind of hard to accidentally build but I'd be surprised if it hasn't happened a few times in Minecraft's history. This comes up a lot because a lot of the best farms are directional, and I think part of the coming of age for every new technical Minecraft player is to spend uh, two hours building a farm just to realize everything's facing the wrong direction and you have to start over. What this means practically is that good farm designers in Minecraft need to know what kind of game mechanics only work in certain directions. When it is possible to remove directionality, a good farm designer will. I wanted to try the opposite. So over there, we had one device had two different behaviors, depending on which way it was oriented. I want to build a machine that has 48 different behaviors and will like do exactly one of them for each possible orientation you can build it in. In other words, we're going to maximize how frustrating it is to build this device instead of minimizing it. By the way, I've been calling these shapes gobstoppers because they remind me of the original Willy Wonka everlasting gobstoppers. But the originals did have seven nubs, the Minecraft gobstoppers only have six. If we're going to be building a device that we're going to like reflect and flip in all possible ways, we've got to use blocks that can be flipped in all possible ways. And most blocks can't, so we're going to have a limited selection for this machine. In other words, we're about to build an orientation sensor, so a circuit that kind of detects which way you've built it in your world, and will produce one of 48 possible outputs, almost letting you know which orientation it was built in. And this is totally useless, but if you watch my videos, you're probably not here for <laughs> useful things. Anyways, now we're actually trying to find directional behaviors, and the first of these is this wire. So this is a wire, you can build it in any direction, and it only works going downwards. The way you build a downward sensor is to just put six of these wires all coming out of a single central source. And now anytime you power this note block, the machine will immediately know which way down is. You could say that this sensor gets down more than any others. <laughs> so once the machine knows which way down is, now it has to figure out which way north, south, east, west are. There's two directional behaviors we're gonna use to check this. Uh, the first is, pistons meeting at an edge, so only one can extend at a time, and if they're both powered at the exact same moment, the one that extends is determined by the direction. You can also have two pistons kind of having a conversation with each other, and these will also tell you something about direction. What's cool is both of these mechanics by themselves won't be enough to reconstruct the compass, north, south, east, west, but both of them together are. So I've marked X and Z with red and blue and have marked negative and positive direction with solid and glass blocks respectively. So the first machine where the pistons share an edge, I built like four copies of it. In other words, this device tells us where the X axis is and where the Z axis is, but it doesn't tell us which way is positive and which way is negative. Next, I took four of the chatting pistons and kind of arranged them in a branch network. So this machine will always output on the negative most corner, so negative x, negative z directions. And so it's the opposite of that one. This one does tell us uh, which way positive and negative is, but it doesn't tell us which direction is x and which is z. These are the same device built to be more convenient for wiring. The first sensor is the partier, because <laughs> because it always gets down. The second sensor is the American voter, because it can tell red from blue. And this third sensor is the critic, because it's just always so negative. Hey, I gotta find some way to lose subscribers, man. Now we can build up our sensor. So we start with the, like, which way is down detector, and then that feeds into six possible uh, which way is negative detectors. In other words, this machine tells you which way is negative for X, Y, and Z all together. And then the final and thumbnail pick is that same device. So we have a six way which way is down detector, 
That feeds into six which way is negative XZ detectors. Each of those feeds into four which is X and Z detectors. And then finally, I realized that this shape is actually similar to the uh, gobstopper shape. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't planned. So I kind of decorated each of these six nubs up as a colored cube. And so here it is. This is a device which has 48 different outputs and will light up exactly one of them, depending on which of all the 48 different ways you can build it in your world. This still took a couple hours, but I only had to build one of them because you can actually make all 48 of these with World Edit. So World Edit and Lightmatica are two programs for doing quick large scale changes in your Minecraft worlds. One of World Edit's features is that it can rotate and flip any like selected area of blocks. Lightmatica is similar, but it can't change which direction is up. So it really only has eight options. The fastest way to make all these was to use World Edit and Lightmatica uh, in tandem. So every single one of these 48 giant gobstoppers has a button on it, and no matter where that button is, it will always light up this light. So this is a different light in terms of like what colors it's next to. So what we've done is we've made a shape that no matter where we turn it on from, it will always output in the same relative location. Uh, specifically, this is the lower nub facing west, and out of the two outputs that are on the west facing lower nub, uh, the rightmost one will always be the one to turn on, no matter what colors or where the button is. And I have gone through every stinking one of these 48 gobstoppers, pressed the button, and made sure it was that light that turned on. And then uh, I think the silliest thing I did was I took one of them, the one where the button uh, to activate it was closest to the output, and added a clock that can be twisted and flipped into every possible direction. And so now this is a glow lichen farm that only works in one of all possible 48 ways you can build it. By the way, a super useful like memory trick for remembering XYZ in Minecraft is the right hand rule. So here's the memory trick if you've never heard of it. It's uh, one, two, three, XYZ, RGB. So you have X axis is red, Y axis green, Z axis blue. And they're on your first, second, third counting fingers. Although that depends on what country you grew up counting in. Specifically, if you face west in Minecraft, and point your thumb over your right shoulder, uh, this will line up with the actual Minecraft coordinates. Fittingly, if you want to find west without using the F3 screen, the cartography table will always face west no matter which way you place it. If you use World Edit on the F3 screen, it'll add this little right hand rule colored like triangle shape in the middle that follows the right hand rule. Anyways, so I've colored the uh, X direction sides with red, the Y direction sides with green, and the Z direction sides with blue. Solid stands for negative and clear stands for positive direction. There's 48 orientations here because there's six different blocks you could put on top. That's kind of how I've tried to group them into families of eight here. And then within each of those families of eight, there's the four rotations of that shape, plus the four mirror images of those rotations. That's all for now. My name's Chris. Thanks for watching.